Hi, I'm Larimar. First of all, I hope you are doing well, staying safe and healthy in the middle of this global public health crisis. In this video, I want to talk about how this all things happen on a global scale from astrological perspectives and when it's going to end. I'm a big believer that knowledge is power and once we have a clarity about what's going on around us, we can better empower ourselves and possibly use this intense period for our best benefit. So, so I'm recording this video on April 4th, 2020. And just a few days ago, we just had a very intense astrological event. Mars and Saturn were coupled together in sidereal Capricorn sign. What does that mean? Well, first of all, before I talk about this, I want to briefly explain uh, why Mars is important. Mars rules a lot of things, but one of them is disease. So about 100 years ago, around 1917 and 18, there was a Spanish flu. And when that happened, Mars was reborn around the stink of Scorpio at the time. Basically, Mars disappeared and reappeared around that part of the constellation. So from astrological perspective, this is considered a rebirth of a planet, reincarnation. And at the time, Jupiter, which is one of the most beneficial planets, was invisible. And the exact same thing happened last year, around October 2019. And that's when this thing first emerged in China. So Mars was reborn around that stink of Scorpio at the time. And it's gonna be alive until December 2021st. So until the time, this thing will persist. So back to April 2020. Actually, uh, it started around the late March. This Mars was approaching Saturn in Capricorn, and Mars is very strong in Capricorn. It's super strong. It gains the biggest power in Capricorn. When Mars and Saturn meet together, uh, oftentimes there is a clash of energy because Mars is the energy that wants to go, 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 go. Like it wants to go at a 300 miles per hour Whereas Saturn wants to slow down and stop everything. So when these two big planets, especially when they are strong, and both planets were very strong in Capricorn, some sort of clashes happen. It could manifest in form of explosion or outbreak of conflicts, wars, or something like that. But since they are in Capricorn, which is all about restriction, organization, um, it created a lot of problems in organizations, country, traditional form of hierarchical systems. And this applies to everywhere as long as one is on this planet Earth. So this is part of a global phenomenon. And for this reason, until this aspect is gonna be loosened out, which is around mid or towards the end of April, we're gonna see a lot of destruction and loss. However, this is about a global phenomenon and this does not necessarily affect you on a personal level because because what is really happening during this period of time is the backdrops are changing. Apparently, this is a significant period of time in history. 
and lots of things are changing in a destructive manner, partially because the south node is in Mula, which is the nakshatra of destruction. It's effective from February to October 2020. So during this period of time, we're gonna, we are experiencing a lot of destruction across the world and not just on the societal levels but on the personal levels of course this can be very scary for lots of people but knowing that it is part of natural cycle just like if there is a summer when things are prospering thriving and growing exponentially there is a winter when things are going down decaying and vanishing so we can start something new in spring when it's the right time. So back to this position. Um, so who's going to be affected? That's the question. Well, obviously Capricorn and Aquarius people. Whoever that has multiple planets in these areas can feel the stress strongly. And if you have any hard aspect between Mars and Saturn in your birth chart, such as conjunction, square, and opposition, take extra precautions regarding your environments. You need to be on top of it. Does not necessarily mean that you are going to get contracted to this thing. However, there's a higher chance that you could possibly experience a very intense emotions and desire to break out of this status quo and that's surely understandable most people across the world are staying at home and the longer we stay at home um, the more uncomfortable and feeling kind of stuck that's that's very natural and understandable so so one way you can do is to find a way to let out your emotion, stress, in a constructive way, not in an aggressive way. And also, if you're conscious of your energy and focusing on raising your vibration, this is actually a great time to exert a lot of personal willpower to get a lot of things done. Because Saturn rules work and Mars is the energy. Both planets are very strong. And this is like a knife. Um, this is like a tool. This position itself is not something negative or positive. It's up to you how to use it. If your vibration is low, you would more prone to you would be more prone to experiencing destruction and stagnation and some sort of violence but oftentimes it could be passive aggression because Aquarius wants to keep things stifled and repressed so instead of being overly extreme take methodical approaches to let out your anger or if you have any or passion or resentment, any sort of intense emotions, you need to somehow transform it in a positive, healthy ways where you can simply work out. That's actually a good thing you can do. All right, so going into May 2020, this is a really, really important time. Um, uh, Three planets are starting to go retrograde and they are Saturn, Jupiter and Venus. So here I have notes. Saturn starts going retrograde in around May 6th until September 26th. So this is when we start really feeling that economy is breaking down unfortunately things are gonna be very slow and 
the world economy would enter into recession. According to ancient astrology, whenever Saturn going retrograde, um, there would be a significant troubles or challenges around making things productive, putting things in order. And Saturn represents organizational body, government, institution, corporations, authority figures. It could be an individual figure and the collective group. So, so they are going to be challenged. Also, Saturn is very strong in Capricorn. And retrograde happens when that planet is closer to Earth than Sun. So from astrological perspective, whatever that is closer to our planet brings much bigger influence. They're giving us direct influence. And Saturn is all about restriction, um, structures, and working very hard diligence persistence patience and slow steady progress so saturn retrograde allows us to do things over and over and over again it takes three to five more efforts to get things done compared to when saturn is in forward movement also, Venus is going retrograde, and it's going to be invisible. The visibility of planet is so important as well, because when planet is invisible, um, whatever that is ruled by that planet is not physically manifested, but it affects our psyche or psychology. And Venus rules money, tangible matters, possessions, everything that is physical and materialistic. So this can affect the stock market in a negative way. I mean, we're already seeing it, but in May, uh, starting May, things are going to be much more serious and somber. And I usually don't want to put out negative energies or negative scenarios um, or like negative programming but this is what this is my observation purely astrological observation and ultimately from our human perspective is things could be very dire and serious devastating and crazy but Ultimately, from universal perspective, everything is meaningless. It's just up to how we define which is which. A lot of things are renewing. And especially when Pluto is in Capricorn, Pluto is all about destruction as well. Renewal though. So it wipes out everything so we can start from the scratch. And don't worry, I'm going to talk about how we can possibly use this energy for our best interest. But before then, there's one more thing that is happening. Jupiter is going retrograde. Ooh, this is going to be challenging. So from May 14th to... September 13th, Jupiter is going retrograde and sidereal Capricorn. That this is a great planet, but it's very weak in Capricorn because Jupiter is all about expansion, giving opportunities and prosperity, abundance and luck versus Capricorn is all about restriction, organization, and tough rules, discipline. So these opposing energies are conflicting each other. That's why Jupiter is not feeling comfortable in the sign of Capricorn. By the way, I'm talking about sidereal system because it is more applicable to the global phenomenon. 
and whereas tropical system is more relevant to individual so Jupiter is very weak in Capricorn but unfortunately Mars is very strong the planet of disease so that's why we are seeing a lot of casualties so from this period of time from May to September a lot of things are gonna slow down even more and we are going to be asked to turn within and in order to follow and learn the lessons of Capricorn we need to be on top of it we need to take responsibilities and be mature how this position is going to affect individuals are going to be different for everyone however there is a common theme and that is about restructuring your life restructuring your priorities so these three planets are going retrograde and that's a huge thing and pretty much everyone except for those who have strong Aries uh, Pisces and Aquarius since the three planets are going retrograde they are gonna activate certain issues to work on regarding health so it's apparent that everyone needs to take care of themselves at this point and nurture their bodies and emotions and stay healthy so take great care of your body and Capricorn is one of the cardinal signs which is about taking actions and bringing new beginnings but in a practical and responsible way we're having a stellium which is four more planets in the same sign or within 30 degrees in the sky and when these things happen there is an intense focused energy triggering a certain area of your life and generally speaking we need to take responsibilities whatever that you are invested in mentally at this point you need to take actions because cardinal sign is action sign express yourself through actions there are a lot of things you can do at home especially when the internet connects everyone in this planet so simply turn within and spend some time for introspection don't just blindly consume random contents on the internet because that's gonna eat up your energy and whatever your focus grows so you need to be really mindful of what you are consuming every single day not just not just the actual food but your mental food go on a mental diet get rid of something that doesn't serve you doesn't help you doesn't bring you value or doesn't bring you progress of any sort so like you are the CEO of your life Capricorn rules an authority figure and we all have an authority figure within ourselves there is an adult self and inner child as well and this is a time that we need to develop and upgrade our adult self to the next level one thing that you might want to avoid would be negative expression of Capricorn which is about self-depreciating behavior or thoughts or words and don't try to make things happen overnight because Capricorn is a very slow sign Capricorn is ruled by a very slow planet whatever that you are building during this period of time is gonna take a lot of time and efforts probably 10 more times because of this retrograde retrograding planets 
But the good thing is the results would be much, much more long lasting and rewarding. From May to September, this is a gestation period. From mid July to mid August, I'm so glad to share this great news. Sun is going to be very strong in Leo. So, uh, so sun rules your immunity. So on a global level, collectively, people are going to regain vitality and become healthier and stronger. Of course, not everyone is going to be healthy, but overall, that's the trend that's going to happen. In summer, things are going to be better and people will be more empowered and active even though there are still challenging elements so that's a good news this is a great time to express who you are sun is who you are your true self so actively pursue what you desire what you're passionate about not what you're afraid of because in this way you can expedite the process of self-realization uh, this term could be a little bit confusing basically self-realization is feeling aligned with yourself and feeling contented with who you are and with your life overall so um, the best thing that you can ever do in your life is to be who you are just be who you are instead of trying to summon who you are not because that can be very painful and stressful and then from August 20th from mid-August I would say uh, this is gonna be very very extremely challenging period of time because Mars is going to get ready for going retrograde in tropical areas and in sidereal it's gonna be uh, some part of Aries and Pisces which is a sign of bacteria or disease and Mars is very strong in Aries which means the power of disease could be much stronger during this period of time and and when it's going retrograde Unfortunately, um, the fatality could increase by three to five times. So I'm pretty concerned about this period of time, especially from mid-August to the end of September. I would strongly recommend that you stay at home and you stay at a safe place. This can be pretty bad. And there are three challenging aspects. Retrograding Mars is squaring Saturn, Jupiter, and Pluto, and all these planets are retrograding. So this, they're, they're going to be very intense, powerful conflicts or clash. And all these planets are in cardinal signs, which is all about action and new beginnings so who there are gonna be a lot of things happening hyper activities especially since there are three planets in Capricorn from organizations on a governmental level institutional level um, And Mars is going to stay retrograded until November 15th. Cool. <laughs> but here's the good news. Here's the good news. You can still survive. What doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. And the good thing is for those of you who are watching this video, uh, you may have a information ahead of time so you can 
get prepared. Another thing that can potentially happen is um, they, there can be a significant apparent conflicts between organizations or countries. This is a position that can indicate some sort of wars, explosion, explosive elements or energy. So uh, this can be pretty powerful and intense, especially until October when South Node leaves Mula Nakshatra, which is the area of destruction. In Vedic astrology, this part of constellation was considered Shiva, the god of destruction. So up until October, at least, uh, there can be a um, huge explosion happening across the, con across the world. And I want to share how to mitigate this aggressive energy of Mars. According to ancient astrology, Mars is only one enemy, which is Mercury. Why is that so? Well, Mars is about action. Mercury is about logical reasoning, thinking. When you think a lot, when you primarily stay in the headspace, you cannot take actions because you're overthinking, overanalyzing things. Because of this challenging aspect from retrograding Jupiter, uh, Saturn, and Pluto, uh, for those of you who are unconscious and staying in a lower vibration, which is a majority of people, and I'm not saying in a cond condescending way, lots of people are not spiritually inclined they are more geared towards material aspects and it's not that material is something negative um the point is that they are not seeing the picture from holistical perspective because material and physical and non-physical things should be integrated so so the majority of people would experience a lot of clashes and that that's also part of our world economy and everything is interconnected so it's gonna affect individuals as well however still you are the creator of your own realities you need to understand that your thoughts especially your subconscious thought patterns create your life experience it's the perspective that matters. So try not to be obsessively invested in the destruction, whatever that's breaking down. Because it is inevitable that things are breaking down. And oh, I want to introduce the serenity prayer. This is what I do um, often. It's a simple prayer that has three parts. You can call upon god universe jesus christ or whatever whoever that you resonate with so first part give me the courage to change the things that i can and grant me serenity to accept the things that i cannot change and the third part is grant me the wisdom to know the difference between the two so that is serenity prayer and here, what I'm seeing from astrological perspective, the destructions are inevitable. So, uh, so I guess the best bet is to reclaim serenity, and particularly because Pluto is engaged in this crazy dynamic. Um, Pluto is all about reclaiming your power. It rules destruction, but it also rules healing and renewal. It's like a phoenix reborn from the ashes. So a lot of people are going to regain power back in regards to what to control and what not to control. Your priorities could change 
there is go- there are going to be a lot of changes both on individual and societal levels and yeah this is going to be pretty crazy period of time full of actions and and um focus on mercury because mercury is the enemy of mars by focusing on developing skills or learning new stuffs communication actively engaging in communications and writing speaking learning reporting texting and business activities um the more you engage in mercurial activities you can mitigate this aggressive effects of uh, mars in aries Mercury is also about details, so pay attention to details and don't just blindly follow what others would, how others are reacting. And your intention is going to matter. So, so pay close attention to what you are mentally invested in, what you're buying into. Try not to believe in conspiracy theory even if it's true it is only half truth everything is half truth what i am noticing and what i personally experienced um in the early part of february when this thing first came out um there was a period of time i got anxious about all these things but then um i realized that there are still many people still unaffected even though especially people on the front line and in administration would be working really really hard to tackle this down while the majority of people stay unaffected but they are more affected on the mental level fear is contagious the more you put in your emotion it gets more intense and extremely powerful so so eventually fear can eat you up so don't do it <laughs> it is okay that t- from time to time you can pull into different directions because of what's going on around the world but your awareness is going to always help you find alignment within you so especially during this time we are legally or morally asked to stay at home and instead of just staying at home physically find your home internally investigate your inner world and look within this is a great time to dig deep into whatever that intrigues you this is a great time to learn something you have always wanted to do or do something what you have always wanted to do but put off so from mid august to september 30th be extra extra cautions regarding your safety and from october to november 15th when mars is still in retrograde focus on redefining your identity because mars rules your identity as well as physical strength physical appearance and it's all about you it's very personal so you could change your actions where you could change your passion during this time because of because of so many different things happening during this time so just mentally be prepared for this time the second half of this year could be pretty challenging and stay positive just do whatever that makes you feel lighter cuz from there you can build anything and and this is a seeding period It may appear that a lot of things are breaking down but at the same time we are planting seeds and whatever we are planting 
this year is going to start sprouting in years to come and especially in December around December 21st Jupiter and Saturn are meeting each other yes so what does that mean I'm gonna create a separate video uh, later towards this period of time because it's such a big topic basically it's a 20-year cycle and last time it happened around 2002 in Taurus tropical Taurus and sidereal Aries so that's when a lot of startups Aries are going viral and there was a war on a collective level there has been significant growth in money market economy manufacturers agriculture anything ruled by Taurus so this year at the end of this year the same position Jupiter and Saturn are joining each other in tropical Capricorn no in tropical Aquarius and sidereal Capricorn so there is gonna be a total reset in regards to government country corporation institution authority figures of any sort and this is gonna be effective for the next 20 year so it's a generational period and everything is changing around this is like a new world is opening up and there can be more regulation in regards to uh, systems like but like anything everything has positive and negative sides to it so if you're more coming from fear-based thoughts uh, you could easily prone to accepting conspiracy theory I'm aware of it um, like a certain group of people are dictating the entire world and depriving of personal with personal freedom etc well that could be true if you're staying in a lower vibration and whatever you focus grows and you're gonna be effect affected much more uh, however however that's only half truth and I want to talk about the positive side of this position so from this point in time in our history there can be emergence of a new class new socio-economic class and I'm wondering who that would be well Aquarius rules science technology and it also rules astrology so I expect that for the next 20 years the general public would be more interested in techno technological advancements and even astrology which I am looking forward to it appears a significant evolution is gonna happen in science universe well rocket science in a sense of equality human rights not just human rights but animal rights and freedom liberation are going to be prominent there has been a lot of discrimination uh, due to genders and ethnic races and certain socio-economic positions poverty versus uh, the affluent all these things can be balanced out and and from sidereal system well Jupiter is weak in sidereal Capricorn whereas Saturn is strong so obviously there could be more restrictions regulations in regards to any type of institution organization and we are being asked to act more mature way in mature way for example like when it comes to environments we have we have not really taken care of other species on this planet even though we are not the only species alive on this planet we would we have been acting as if we are the best and 
just as no one else can beat us. Yeah, so the rights of animals, the nature, could be restored, as well as ch children' rights and the rights of the older people, social minorities. A lot of resources would be re redistributed in a new way. And also, Jupiter and Saturn together, this is a position of teacher, guru, and a person of wisdom. So, during this period of time and for the next 20 years, there are going to be um, more capable leaders leading the society and that's not going to be defined by certain gender or age groups or ethnic race like even children would gain a lot more power compared to the past because Aquarius rules a large group of people and it's a system that does not have a center like the internet or skin, hormone, brain and, and when you think of a watch like traditional watch there are a lot of different things I don't know how to call it but, but if one part of this thing breaks down the entire watch doesn't work so it's like that everyone is equally important although they are special in their own ways so these things can be a predominant social economic political trends yeah more focus on governmental bodies or authority figures okay so back to this health crisis when is gonna end well in april 2021 jupiter is finally entering into sidereal aquarius meaning that it's no longer weak and when jupiter is visible and prominent uh, the impacts of disease would significantly get lowered i personally assume that this is the period of time when the remedies the cures could come out and <clears throat> jupiter basically brings a lot of luck and optimism that's part of the reasons why the majority of people at this point are prone to pessimistic view, viewpoints because Jupiter is weak. So April 2021, things are going to be improved significantly and Mars is going to disappear on July 2021. So this is when this health crisis would would noticeably wane fade out and total death of this issue would happen when mars is reborn in december 2021st so we still have a an year and a half left so this is gonna be a journey but it really depends on your perspective when it comes to how you handle crisis I am going to make a video about how to deal with crisis because everyone deals in a different way and this can be explained from astrological perspective and it doesn't mean that uh, you are destined to behave in certain ways or well partially yes and no because you have inborn qualities and free will so when you have a clear when you have clarity about how you are wired how you are operating by default this knowledge can help you empower yourself and choose to maximize the positive aspect of your inborn qualities so that's why i'm gonna share um so stay in tune and i hope this is helpful for you and feel free to leave a comment below i would love to hear about your feedback and stay safe and have a great day bye